Hi friends, welcome to episode 72 of the Quirky Monday Craftcast. My name is Kalisha and you can find me anywhere online as the Diratani. Thank you so much for coming to spend some time with me today. Today is Monday, February 4th and I'm coming to you as usual from my home in Central Florida. Um, like I said, thank you so much for being here. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. And if you are a new viewer, which I see that there are quite a few more of you guys since last week. Hey! <laughs> welcome and thank you so much for deciding to spend some time with me and see what I have going on over here in my corner of the internet. Um, I am going to give you guys a disclaimer. There is wildlife afoot. There are quite a few bees in the bushes going from little flowers to little flowers and um, I've been known to be dive bombed by random acts of Florida wildlife. If you are a longtime viewer, you will probably remember the time that I was out here just podcasting, minding my own business, when a wasp flew into my glasses. Yep, that happened. So, um, I please forgive me if I start like looking off to the corner or above the camera with fear and trepidation in my eyes it's because shenanigans could be afoot we don't know also the dogs are outside so they will probably make an appearance as they like to do <sighs> yes so let's see we do have some announcements one Last week I did the drawing for the 1,000 subscriber giveaway. There were two winners. One of the winners has gotten in touch with me. The second one has not. So if you entered that giveaway, please go back and watch last week's episode. See if that second winner is you so that you can get in touch with me and I can mail out your prize. If I have not heard from that second winner um, by the time I film next week's episode, which will be next Monday, um the 11th I'll put I'll put the the date on the screen but if I have not heard from you by this date then I will redraw and choose a new winner um, because I do want the prizes to go out to someone who is actually watching the podcast because um, I feel like that's fair right so that's announcement number one announcement number two as we are now into February by half a week, um, our Pisces season make along is quickly approaching. It's gonna start on February 19th. As of right now, I have not set up the Ravelry uh, threads for that, but um, Kalisha of the future, get on that home girl. So yeah, um, I have seen that there have been new people joining the uh, Ravelry group which you can find by searching the Quirky Monday Craftcast in the Groups tab on Ravelry or by clicking the link in the down bar. Um, so yeah, we will have a chatter thread and a finished objects thread. Whips are welcome. The make along is going to go from February 19th to March 20th, which is Pisces season. Um, I'll put up the graphic right here. And that's kind of like the deets. So um, I'm really excited about this. This is my first solo along, only my second along in ever. So I'm excited, nervous, excited. Ooh. We've also um, gotten a few um, prize donations already. So huzzah, <laughs> I'm excited and nervous. But um, yes, so that's everything I wanted to mention about the Pisces season make along. Um, remember, it is not only limited to yarny things. So if you want to do a painting or you want to do a cross stitch or anything like that, have at it. Um, you can, yeah, and post like your pictures and stuff. Um, we do have a hashtag, so use that hashtag on Instagram. Um, yeah. 
that is everything uh, for that. Is there anything else announcement-y wise that I want to highlight? I don't think so. But before we get into the crafty bits, I do want to acknowledge my sign here, which it says a multitude of small delights. And that's actually not the full quote. The full quote is from this book. Well, it's in this book. Uh, do one thing every day that makes you happy. It's a journal that has like positive quotes and things like that, inspirational quotes, and then also like little prompts for you to write in. But I love buying happiness books um, and just like having those books around me. So like whenever I'm feeling particularly crummy, I'll pick one up, flip it open, and just like kind of read these inspirational quotes and it makes me smile. So the full quote is by Charles Baudelaire and it says, a multitude of small delights constitute happiness. And the prompt for that particular day is basically for you to write what today's small delights were. Um, and I love thinking about happiness in that way, um, that happiness isn't just like a destination. Like when I get X thing, I'll be happy. You know, it's remembering to look at the small, you know, things that happen, um, the small delights that happen in your life that when they, when they build up, you, you get a bigger picture of, of happiness. So that's actually a nice little segue into um, a new segment that I'm introducing into the podcast. And this was not my idea. This was one of the um, uh, suggestions that was left in the 1000 subscriber giveaway video. And this person suggested that since at the end of each podcast, I ask you guys to leave a comment with something positive that happened to you that past week. This person suggested that I share some of those. So last week was the first time that I um, introduced that dimension of you guys' positive moments, um, just letting me know if, if you're cool with me sharing them. And two people um, specifically said that I could share their positive moments. So I'm going to go ahead and read those, those comments to you. Um, here's the first one. It says, I, hello phone, thank you. I moved to Philadelphia about five years ago and found a wonderful little yarn shop two years into being here. Like most shops, like most shops these days, they were more pro knitting than crochet. I remember asking if they, if they had thought about teaching crochet and was told there wasn't enough interest to offer classes. Fast forward three years and I was contacted last month by the shop and asked if I would teach crochet. I was literally blown away and grateful. It feels so good to know that more people are gaining interest in crochet. Um, I've been crocheting for about 20 years and it has been such an important craft in my life. I'm honored to share crochet love. So that is really awesome to be reached out to, to be like, hey, you know, can you, we're getting more people interested in this. Will you come and teach a, craft, a class? So thumbs up to him for uh, getting that opportunity and being willing to um, to pursue that as well. And the second, okay, this one says, something positive from my week is that I didn't have to throw out any fresh food this week. My meal planning and more specific shopping lists have meant I've used everything up and not found vegetables in the fridge that never got eaten. It feels so good. Goodbye to food and money waste. Uh, plus it made me more creative with my cooking to use things up. So as someone who is a terrible eater, like I will forget to eat. Like seeing something like this is really kind of motivational to me to be like, you know what, Kalisha? You probably can do meal prep. You just have to be a little bit more organized and intentional about this segment of your life, which is something that I want to get into. So thumbs up to her for being able to like, like win at that food prep and shopping and no waste on the food front. That is really, really awesome. So two thumbs up to our 
two shared positive experiences, positive moments. So yeah, um, I kind of want like a fun title for this section. I don't know what it should be called. Comments? You guys title this section. Anyway, so that is everything that we are going to chat about before the crafting. <sighs> Put that aside, take a sip. I think this is why I'm like super chattery today and have had to film this, this intro like four, four or five times is because I drank like all of this coffee basically in one gulp. One should not do that. So yeah, let's get to the craftiness. Um, I have a finished object. And in true Kalisha form, the ends are not woven in because I didn't do it. Um, I did block it though. And I will insert a picture of it uh, pinned out on my yoga mat. Um, you know, we all go and pin out our, our hand mitts and hand crochets so that they're in really nice condition. Let them sit out, block, all this good stuff. And then if you have a pet, they come and they sit in the middle of it. Why? Why? So here's a picture of Kiva blessing my project with all of her dog fur. This is the life I lead, y'all. So this is my take a chance on me wrap. Wait, let's go from the beginning. So this is the beginning, and it goes all the way over to there. It is, my wingspan is about six feet, and it is six feet, y'all. Like, I'm not entirely sure how I'm gonna wear this thing, but there it is. Now, one thing I semi-regret doing is when I blocked this, you know, I, um, I was like, okay, I want it, like, I don't have fancy wool wash, right? I, Kiva, can you come back in your yard, please? Oh, Kiva, come back here. I said, can you come back in your yard? She looked at me, turned right back around and continued walking through the neighbor's yard. Such attitude. Mm-hmm. You better get in your own yard. Tootie. Tootie. Come. These dogs. I done forgot what I was saying. <laughs> I don't have like any fancy blocking wool wash. Um, so I literally just got like a bottle of wool wash from the Dollar Tree. It's unscented. So what I did was I put some essential oil in the soaking water. I didn't think about the fact that the essential oil, the scent that I used um, is one that I like in small doses. This, not a small dose. So every time I pick it up, I'm just like overwhelmed with the scent. So I think I'm going to like wash it again with a different scent to try to get like to, to lighten it or actually to change it completely. Um, yeah, I also think that I'm going to over dye this shawl because it's it's meant to be used with um, advent calendar minis or just 20 gram minis that you have um, you know in your stash and so mine are very they are very different from each other um, I feel like the tones in it are kind of similar to each other like they're none of them are like super bright or super super dark they're all kind of like mid-tone um, like contrast wise but it just feels choppy. So I think I'm going to over dye it. I have no idea what color I'm going to over dye it with, but um, 
I feel like if I give it like a base wash of a color then all of the under like the the tones that it is now will give it like like different different tonalities and stuff at least that's what it looks like in my head I could be completely wrong I'm not sure but it's done um yeah so that is my take a chance on me shawl All right, what's next? Works in progress. I'm just gonna reach down in the bag and we'll pull out the projects. The first one I have here is my Nalia wrap. I have everything. Nothing is in a project bag right now because I was kind of like jumping from project to project last night. So here we are. The last time you guys saw the Nalia wrap, it was about here. So I have finished that section. And I don't remember which yarn this was, so I'll put it on the screen. Um, and then the next one, so day six, is this one. And this is the rainbow colorway um, from Nitpicks, in Nitpicks Felici. I really love how this crocheted up. And I have, two, I have two balls of this in my stash that I was gonna use for socks, but now I kind of wanna crochet it. Like, I feel like this would be a really fun crochet hat. And I don't have any crocheted fingering weight hats. So that might be a thing, I think so. So I finished that whole one, and then I'm on to my last uh, mini. So this is day seven. And this is the last, uh, the second mini from Alice Alishka. And so it's like a hand dyed one from her. Um, and I really like how it's looking. It's really fun. But um, yeah, so for you new viewers, this is the Nalia Wrap by Sh Shara Maid. Um, it is my Kwanzaa Wrap. I was calling it the Kwanzaa Event Wrap. And it's really hard to hold this hold this up because it's so long I shouldn't have made it this long I should have made it wider like I should have thought this through but um, essentially what it is is um hold on Tootie's about to lose her mind where were we I had to put the dogs inside they were doing the most so I was saying how I feel like I should have done this wider which I think I might be able to do. Not sure. We don't, I don't know how this is gonna go. But anyway, so Kwan's event. Um, this past December, I did Vlogmas. See if I can nuggetize this real quick. This past December, I did Vlogmas. I didn't have any um, like yarn advent calendars, which I really wanted one. Couldn't get one, a bit pricey for me, it's fine. Um, but when, like, what was it, November, when Get Your Yarn Wishes Granted was happening, I wished for minis so that I could create my own, um, advent calendar, and I received seven. So I was like, um, at first I was like, okay, I'll just, you know, put these into my stash, and then I remembered, or I thought, um, about using them for the seven days of Kwanzaa, which I was really excited about, so that's essentially what I did. So starting here, this was the colorway for day one. And with Kwanzaa, each day has a principle that you discuss. And um, they're basically principles for building, your, building the community. And um, also principles for being just a better person. <laughs> day one's principle is Umoja, which means unity. This is the color for day two. Um, day two is Kujichak. Kujijakulia, and that means self-determination. Day three is Ujima, which is cooper no. Ujima is collective work and responsibility. Um, day four is Ujama, which is cooperative economics. Day five is Mia, which is purpose. Day six is Kuumba, which is creativity. 
And day seven is Imani, which is faith. And so I am on day seven of my Kwanzaa event colors. And then after I finish this one, each, each day is separated by a stripe of gray. So I'll do one more stripe of gray and then I will do this color repeat reverse on the other side. Um, this, the red, the green, and this one are ones that I dyed myself. Um, these three, I dyed like on the stove top. I think I dyed them on the stove top. Yeah, I dyed those on the stove top. And then this one, I dyed over an open flame in the backyard, which was fun. Um, actually, this side, I think, shows the colors better. Oh, no, it's the same. Um, but yeah, so uh, the reason that we have the red, black, and green here is that those are the colors of the Pan-African flag. Um, the representation, or the colors represent um, the red for blood, the black for um, African skin, and the green for the land. So that is the significance of the red, black, and green flag. Um, this one is just a red, black, and green variegated. And this one, it's also red, black, and green, but because of like doing the dying over flame, uh, the black kind of took over everything. But I'm not stressed about it. It's fine. So yeah. I also really love that I got the rainbow colorway for uh, creativity. So yeah. Um, but yeah, this, it's really, really long. Right now it's probably, I think, five feet-ish. Yeah, it's about five feet right now. And I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I don't know. So part of me is thinking, okay, go ahead and finish it and see like how you can style it. Like if you want to use it as like a shawl or something like that. Um, part of me wants to figure out um, how I could, I don't know, I just don't know how I'm going to use it, but I love it. I love the symbolism in it. I love the, the pattern is super, like, super simple. It's like a two row repeat and I'm just going on. Um, I did run into a little yarn chicken right here I actually I lost yarn chicken as you can see that bright green my Felici ended right here I even ripped out this row and crochet tighter to see if I could stretch it but no so I just had to pull a little green from my stash to fill that out but you can barely even notice it's fine so that is almost done I'll put that over there. The next work in progress is my Kia sock. It's not like hugely different than it was the last time you guys saw it. Oh, okay. Hello, light. This is where it was last time you guys saw it. So I've done basically, I think, one and a half repeats um, in the uh, sock pattern. And the Kia sock pattern is um, by Don, a pattern by Dawn Hendi Henderson. I almost said Hendix. No, she's Dawn Henderson on Ravelry um, and Dawn.Landix on Instagram. She designed this sock, this sock pattern as a kind of a response to the discussions on racism and representation in the fiber community. And um, if you can see, the texture, it's a texture pattern. Oh. It's a texture pattern and the the pearl stitches resemble equal signs. So I really love it. It's really easy to do. And I'm just knitting along. Um, I haven't tried reading and doing this one yet. Um, essentially you're doing a four by four rib on like every other row. So I think I can do it and read, but I think it might just be having to pay a little bit more attention to the knitting than I, than I normally do when I'm like knitting stockinette. 
but the yarn that I'm using is by um, Queen's Yarn Boutique and it is the Firestarter colorway. That's how it looks. And yeah, I'm loving them. Um, what else can be said about these? I don't know. I think I'm gonna make these kind of like fairly tall compared to you know the the length I normally make my socks, which is about 60 to 70 rows on the leg after the cuff. So I think I'm gonna make these maybe closer to 80 or 90 rows after the cuff. And my cuffs are always 20 rows long, 20 rounds. So there's that. Oh, I'm making that on a 2.25 millimeter needle and I'm using 64 stitches for the count as is required in the pattern. Um, next work in progress. Oh, and this is my last one. Last, oh, it's not my last one. I tell fibs. I tell fibs. Um, last episode, I had mentioned wanting to start another uh, Just Feel Better shawl. And Just Feel Better is the first pattern that I ever released. It's a free pattern um, in my Ravelry shop. And it is a granny stitch based shawl. Um, very simple increases where you start at the small end and you go as big as you want it to. I wanted something that was completely like mindless and like comforting for me. And I actually have my original one in here. I hope you guys can't hear the dogs barking. My neighbor just got home. My dogs really are friendly. They just don't like noise. So this is my original Just Feel Better shawl. And it is made uh, in fingering weight. And it is, it's a big one, as you can see. And these are my favorite colors. One moment. Yes, these are my favorite colors. Um, the white yarn that you see the undyed yarn in here is a sparkle base so there's just like a little sparkle in it and then all of the colors are ones that I dyed myself so um, yeah so that is just feel better um, I made it super big so that I could just snuggle up in it like this if I wanted or you know wrap it around my shoulders or whatever like that just to be like cozy, right? So I decided that I wanted to make another one of these. I was thinking about it last week, you know, because January was very emotional um, for me, as with as it was for quite a few people, um, and as it continues to be. Um, but I wanted to make another Just Feel Better shawl. Um, to, to love all myself, right? So I am using um, Lion Brand Mandala. This is the Troll colorway. And this is how much I have gotten in. So this is a DK weight yarn. So I'm going to use out this whole ball and see kind of how big it goes. If I still want it to be bigger, um, I can get another one of these. Um, but I did pull out all of the purples and pinks that was in here. So in the middle here, it's like a dark purple. And then it went from here out to like the brighter pink. I decided to take the, the bright purples and bright pinks out so that it would be Pisces colors. So I'm actually, I think, going to put this away until the start of the Pisces make along, the Pisces season make along. Um, even though whips are allowed, I know that if I continue working on this, being that, you know, I still have essentially 15 days until it starts, I'm totally going to finish it. So I'm just letting it hang out. Fun fact, even though I wrote the pattern 
all of these increases in this uh, mint section are wrong. Didn't do it right, but it's fine. Um, yeah, so that is my second Just Feel Better shawl. It is going to be put on hold for just a little while until the Pisces season make along starts. But this, this just looks like, I don't know, like like the prettiest ocean, right? Right? Ooh, I love it. I really like this this blue that I'm working with right now. That one is so pretty. Um, and then there's one last, I guess I'll just show this to you. It's just the um the vanilla sock that I was carrying with me to the movies. Um, one of my friends and I did the Out of the Darkness um, Suicide Awareness Walk this past Saturday, and this was the project I took with me um, to knit while we were walking. Um, and I, I didn't, I didn't do a lot, a lot. I did, you know, probably from my finger up to here, so less than ten rows, less than ten rows. But um, even though knitting and crochet are things that I use often to help alleviate anxiety, sometimes I find that I still get too anxious to knit or crochet. And I was feeling that a bit that day um, where my hands were kind of a bit more shaky and not twitchy, twitchy, but they felt like mm, ungainly when I was trying to knit while it's being out there. But we'll talk more about that at the end of the podcast. So that is all, that is all of my works in progress. Um, I don't have any maker plans as of right now. I have some like ideas bubbling around in my head. Um, I do know that I want to cast on, either cast on or chain on something cabled because um, my friend Akira of the uh, Knitting Annihilator podcast is co-hosting a cable cow um, with, um, Grace of Babel's Traveling Yarns and is it Faye of Fairy Little? I think. I think that's what it is. But the three of them are co-hosting a cable cow and I currently don't have anything going that is cabled. So um, I'm thinking about starting a new project with cables you know one of my um make nine projects has cables in it i think um the what are they called brothers not twins socks by um diane ugo i think those have cables i might start those not sure we'll find out <laughs> so um, I guess now we can jump into stash positions um, and I I don't have like any yarn and she says that she checks the notes I don't have any yarn I didn't buy any yarn is that true I feel like that's not true I feel like maybe I bought yarn and forgot about it but I have some sheepy things I found sheep socks. These I found at Target, which aren't those cute. And then look, ba bam, black sheep. <laughs> and then this one I found, where was I? TJ Maxx. Just like little Valentine sheep. There's also some really cute sheep socks that they have at Joann's right now, like in their spring socks, like Easter socks or whatever. There's some uh, with sheep on them that I think I'm going to get. 
So um, before I started knitting socks, I was like huge into the novelty sock game. Um, since I work in a portrait studio, I work in JCPenney Portrait, we have to wear all black. And being essentially a very colorful person, wearing all black was like pulling teeth. So when I first started, you know, you wore all black, everything, black socks, right? Then I started wearing like black socks with like neon colored ribbing. And then I started wearing like blue socks or striped socks. And then I was just like, all the socks. So like I had socks for every holiday. When it came Christmas, like the day after Thanksgiving until February 1st was Christmas socks. Every day that I worked, I had different pairs of Christmas socks that I wore. Starting February 1st, I had Valentine socks. I had um, St. Patrick's Day socks, Easter socks. Um, 4th of July socks, Thanksgiving socks, like all kinds of socks. Like that was my thing. Like people would ask me like, oh, what kind of socks do you have on today? Like people who were like regularly in the studio. Um, and then I started knitting socks. So now whenever I work, I'm always wearing my hand knit socks. And it's rare that I will wear like commercial socks. But when I saw these, I was like, oh, I obviously have to get these and put like wear these so those made me happy I also got a new pair of sandals which I'm wearing I got these and I feel like these are like the perfect sock or the perfect knit sock sandals so that's kind of one thing I've been doing um, the last acquisition I have is a pin and this pin was sent to me by Quaylen of the Quo podcast. And he has created this. Oh, hello. There you go. You can see it now. Um, this little beauty. And one thing that I thought was really awesome with this pin is that he essentially has four variants. He has um, a light skin and a dark skin one in each of the designs and then he has a crochet and a knit so the crochet one it says hooker and then the knit version says knitwit and the fun thing about this pin is that it's interactive bug it's interactive so their hat comes up and they have a little skein for brains <laughs> so you can put their hat down and then Ta-da! Skein for brains! And I think that's really cool. So um, there's also a, a knit and a crochet pattern where you can actually make the hat yourself, um, which is really awesome. Um, and I want to say he did the collaboration or, or has also collaborated with Alex Creates on this particular um, pink yarn color for the hat. So. Um, I'll find the details, I'll put them down below so that you can check that out. So thank you so much Quaylin for sending this to me. Um, it is going to be a really fun addition to my collection. I might actually have to make a bigger pennant. Darn. <laughs> so yes, I really like that. Um, is there anything else that I wanted to talk about that's hanging around down here? Not yet, no. All right, so let's talk about Black Fibers, Black Threads. So this week on Black Fibers, Black Threads, we're talking about me. <laughs> um, one of the um, one of the things that was mentioned or was not mentioned, recommended. Uh, in the 1,000 subscriber giveaway um, comments was um, someone said that they wanted to hear about my older um, projects. So I decided that for today, um, being that it's the first podcast of Black History Month, we would talk a little bit about my history with fiber crafts and fiber arts. So. 
my mom taught me to crochet when I was in the seventh grade and I can't really remember how long ago that is right now so I'm gonna put that on the screen I have been crocheting for this many years <laughs> and I have been knitting for three I think I believe it was it's three years so my mom taught me how to crochet YouTube taught me how to knit so this what I have here is my very first crochet project and it is made from old school uh, Red Heart acrylic in the impressionist colorway. I remember that because I had like so many balls of this particular yarn and I really don't like the color. Like I don't know why I chose this color, but I did. My mom taught me how to do the chain stitch and the double crochet. Um, and then my cousin Dawn taught me how to do the granny square. So the way I did this was <laughs> I was making these granny squares and you can see how wibbly wobbly they are. Like, look at that. Ooh. You know, and then I joined them together and they're joined too tightly, but whatever. So I was making these granny squares and um, I got bored. So then I decided to go back and forth and these are all treble crochet stitches because it just wasn't fast enough for me. So I made bigger stitches in between. And then I did another row of the granny stitch, the granny squares. And then I was like, okay, I'm just gonna make the rest in the treble crochet. So it's, mm, it's about, six feet wide um, if I stretch it and probably about maybe four and a half feet you know wide this way and <laughs> because it is like that old school red heart like I feel like this is the red heart yarn that whenever anybody is like oh gosh I don't like using acrylic it is so scratchy this is the yarn they're talking about this not so much this little scratchy little scratchy but um, yeah this was my first project and I remember like my mom I remember her teaching me how to do the stitches and kind of almost like teaching me in passing and she was you know she told me that she learned how to do it when she was in elementary school I think and she told me you know her teacher taught them how to do you know your regular stitches and your popcorn stitches and baubles and all this stuff um, but she only taught me how to do double crochet that's fine mom I learned from YouTube but um, yeah, so she would, you know, she kind of, she taught me how to do that. And then I remember one Christmas, um, I was, I was crocheting something and she picked it up and started doing like popcorn stitches on it. And I thought that was so cool. Like my mom occasionally surprises me with her knowledge of, um, of yarn crafts because she's not really the like sit down and make stuff kind of person like she's always going she's always doing something um yeah so my cousin who taught me how to do the granny stitches or the granny squares she was the first person that i ever knew who crocheted as a like as an emotional support kind of thing. Um, whenever she was like upset about something or going through something, she would just get a huge ball of yarn and just make granny squares. And she had, she would super quickly create these bedspreads essentially 
just of making the different granny squares and sewing them together and she'd have a blanket and then um, you know she would make little blankets and things for her friends and stuff like that but you know she was the first person that I ever put together with um, I ever put together the idea that making was like therapy you know so um, I remember I remember when she taught me how to do the granny square um, it was Easter and like all my family would get together during Easter to go to my college's homecoming um, I went to the same college that my parents went to Oakwood University in Huntsville Alabama um, but every Easter they have homecoming or alumni weekend and um, so we would basically all get together at that time and it was kind of like a family reunion along with alumni weekend and I remember sitting down with Dawn and she like showed me how to do the granny square and I remember I liked it because it was repetitive and relaxing and I have this thing that I do that I count like if I'm carrying something really heavy I'll count um, I'll count my steps um, because I guess it takes my mind off of like the heavy thing I'm carrying but when I was crocheting the granny squares um, because there were there are clusters of three I would count like one it were clusters of three and there's three motions to make a double crochet stitch um, so I'd be like one two three one two three one two three one with the the chain stitch in the middle and then one two three one two three you know kind of like almost keeping time to music in 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 an interesting kind of way in my mind right and I remember I made this little purse and I was so proud of that purse um, and it was like from there I always had kind of that um, that skill in my like in my backpack almost I didn't do much um, crocheting or knitting in in high school or not knitting I didn't do much crochet in high school um, or college I don't think and then I kind of picked it back up really big after college and then of course a couple years ago I learned how to knit by watching videos on YouTube but it's it's a wonderful thing to have this craft and to to know that it's something that you can just go back to and it's something that can be very accessible you know you don't have to spend a whole lot of money to to do these things you know you can if you want to you can very easily spend a whole lot of money to do these things if you wanted to but in a nutshell it's a very accessible like peaceful craft like thing to do and um, I really like that about crocheting and knitting and it's definitely something that I want to share with other people yeah so that's just a little bit about my crochet history this is my first my first project um, first thing I made I, I use this blanket or I have used this blanket in the past. I don't tend to use it so much anymore because it is quite scratchy. Um, I feel like this has gotten scratchier as I have washed it. Um, I don't really know why that would be, but it makes me smile when I look at it because I know this was the first thing that I crocheted, like the first finished thing that I crocheted. Um, even though it was only finished because I got bored of it, but finished is finished. Um, yeah. That's a little bit of Kalisha's crafty history for Black Fibers, Black Threads today. Um, the last couple things that I wanted to talk about are Quirky Monday Crafts, which is my Etsy shop where I sell zipper bags, which I don't have any out here with me because I just put everything in a tote bag. Um, but 
last Friday, I had an update and I had my Valentine's bags. So um, I put up my small and medium Valentine's bags in the shop and they all sold out in the same day. And that has never happened to me before. Like my mind is blown like after i finish filming this i'm going to be packaging up all of those orders and sending them out so thank you so so much for supporting my shop um and for shopping that update i do have large bags that are still yet to there's a bee guys i still have large bags that are yet to go up in the shop so there's a few of those that are going to go up and then because of the overwhelming exciting response that I saw on Instagram to the cookies and milk fabric um, I am going to be making some more of those um, the cookies and milk bags look like this so I'm going to be making the two-tone bags um, so it will be the cookies and milk on the top and then a solid color at the bottom and um, the the full solid cookies and milk bag so I'll put a couple of those up in the shop so if you wanted the cookies and milk fabric but missed out on it I will be uploading some more of those and um, they are just going to go up as I finish them so I would say to um, like or follow my shop whichever option it is over there on Etsy but basically whenever you like a shop or you follow it um, Etsy will send you a notification when that maker has uploaded new products so you can do that if you're looking out for that um, that cookies and milk bag um but yeah i was completely blown away like i have no words i have no words so i'm excited to you know keep moving keep creating these bags and keep growing i have the round top bags um, that i have a design for um, i still need to tweak it but I will be um, reintroducing that design or that shape to my shop um, in the future, like within this year. And um, I have black history bags, black history bags going up. I'm calling them black history bags. Really, they are just um, the African print and Cara fabric. Um, so I'll be creating bags out of that fabric that I have. And um, yeah, so those, the cookies and milk will be next going back up like getting re-upped in the shop then the um, African print bags and then we will get back into some like other prints and um, collections going back in the shop after that so thank you guys so much for supporting the shop I really appreciate it it is so like motivating to see that you know people actually want my work and uh, uh, but yes, um, ah, yes, before I get too like McFrazzled over that, um, let me see, what was the last thing before we go? That's everything fibery. That's everything yarny. Um, the next little segment is my uh, life and whatnot. So February 2nd, this past Saturday, was the Out of the Darkness Suicide Awareness Walk. Um, one of my friends asked me if I would go with her and um, I agreed to um, typically like going out and doing things like that isn't something that I automatically do just because I don't I don't really like being around a whole whole lot of people and I kind of knew that I didn't really like being around a whole lot of people like I don't like it like if you're walking down the street and somebody bumps into you like it kind of like like makes my skin crawl in a weird way but um yeah so I wanted to go and support her so when I registered for the walk um, it was one of those ones that you're like raising money um, for suicide awareness and prevention and so I I set the goal at $50 and I was like okay um, I can I was basically thinking like I can get my family members to donate to this and make my fifty dollars would be no problem and then I thought let me go ahead and share it on Instagram maybe somebody else will want to donate to it so I shared it on Instagram and you guys like blew my little fifty dollar expectation out of the water um, 
after a couple days, like a couple days after it being posted there, um, we had raised $150. So I was just like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. So then I thought, you know, let's see if we can get it to 200. And so I moved the, the goal up to 200. And at that point, there was still a couple weeks before the walk. So um, I moved the goal up to 200 and it stayed at 150 for a little while and then somebody gave a $50 donation that boosted it up to the 200 and I was like oh my gosh this is amazing we met this goal this is this is crazy right and so so I was super excited that you know we met that goal I was proud of this community um, and the people that have um, connected with me over Instagram um, that cared to share their stories and to share their um, desires for um, suicide awareness and prevention you know to be furthered um, it was it was heartbreaking to see how many people you know, left comments saying that, you know, suicide has touched their lives in some sort of way. Um, it is, there's no words, you know? But I think when you look and you see around you, when people start speaking up about their personal struggles with suicide or, um, their family members or friends or people they know who have struggled with suicide and then people that they have lost to suicide, you really start seeing that our responsibility as people needs to also extend to seeing each other, you know, to paying attention to others. When my friend and I were on the walk, um, they had different signs and things along the way. And one of the things said, one of the signs was, know the signs, save a life, right? And she said to me, she's like, you know, sometimes there aren't any signs. Like sometimes, you know, nobody, sometimes a person doesn't exhibit like signs or they don't reach out for help or something like that. And it just made me think like, then it is our responsibility as friends and family members to check on each other, you know? especially just randomly you know um if you haven't talked to one of your friends in a little while send them a message let them know that you're thinking about them um reach out to a family member say hey you know you crossed my mind i just want to send you a message tell you i love you see how you're doing um asking people how they're doing and waiting for an answer you know looking people in the eye when you ask them these things um just being aware of each other you know what I mean and like these are things that you can do that that make you a more um, open and accessible person if someone does want to talk you know um, but yeah so we the morning of the walk um, I posted again you know that we were going to the walk and I was just kind of thinking about all of the people that had shared um, their experiences, right? And I started feeling the weight of it. And not in a way that made me anxious, but in a way that made me feel like this is something that I have to do. Um, I have to carry these people with me during the walk, right? So I was just talking about that and you know what I was thinking. And when we got there, um, we registered, we walked, you know, walked around, we talked to like one person, <laughs> um, but she was really nice. Um, and then when we went on the walk, it was just like a walk around this lake. Um, it was, it was sobering to see so many people um, basically honoring the people that they've lost on their shirts and 
Um, there was this one section where you could write messages in the sidewalk chalk. You know, all these people who are writing the names of people that they've lost. It was just really sobering to see just that. Like in this small area, so many people that have been touched by this particular thing. And, you know, I was, I was glad that, I was glad to have the opportunity to be a part of that. Um, so yeah, after, after we left, um, I, I looked to see, um, you know, if we had managed to raise any other money um, on like my donation page and it had gone up to four hundred and sixty dollars um, mind you I had moved the goal to 200 and then it had jumped to 460 and I just I felt overwhelmed knowing that the people who were donating believed in this particular cause you know um, they believed that or they believe that this is important like and it is you know I can't rattle off the stats the statistics for how many people are lost to suicide and how many people deal with suicide but in my personal life it's it is it has been present you know and I am so honored to have been able to be a, a, an outlet for people to share their stories and to raise money for this, um, this cause. And if you have donated, thank you so much. Um, if you would like to donate, I'll put a link down below. I think the donations stay open until like March. But um, I think the the um, it was run by the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Yeah, um, and their goal was or is a hundred and fifty thousand dollars that they wanted to raise. So my iPad just died. Sorry for the quality change but <clears throat> I really wanted to um, get this out. <laughs> but yeah, so um, the American Foundation for, the, for Suicide Prevention was running the Out of the Darkness Walk and their goal uh, was to raise $150,000. And I think the last time I looked at it, they were at 135000 so hopefully they'll be able to reach their goal um, by the time that the uh, donations close. And I think it's in March. I'll double check, I'll put it down, at, down below. But um, yeah, so that was, that was a really amazing experience. And my friend was um, saying to me, like, you know, thank you for coming and you know, everything like that. And I was just like, you know, I would not have come out of like my own idea like I see like different walks and things like that and I'm like oh that's really wonderful but I always um, shy away from participating because of the peopling aspect but I'm so glad that she asked me to go with her and I'm glad that I was able to do something positive for the people in in my immediate community like with my friend and as well as the people in my online community on Instagram it was a good experience I'm glad that I went um, so yeah that's everything for today guys I'm going to go ahead and end this because I it's just gonna be weird cropping these together but um, Thank you so much for being here. Remember to leave a comment down below of something positive that happened to you this week. And if you want me to share it, make sure you mention in that comment, like, okay to share or something to that extent um, so that I can share it on next week's episode. Um, thank you for being a part of my universe. I really appreciate each and every one of you. And 
I hope that you are able to find um, those small delights to create a bigger picture of happiness. Um, I hope that you're able to find peace and moments of joy in this coming week. Um, and I hope that you're able to share that with someone else. I hope each one of us is able to shine our lights and to brighten our corners and to share happiness with each other. Thanks for being here today. Bye guys.